former Yankees pitcher. Carl Pavano certainly took his time looking for a team, and ultimately he went back where he came from. I always thought he would end up back with the Twins, Bob, and he did with a two-year deal. I guess the interesting information from a Yankee perspective that came out about this is yesterday at Rafael Soriano's press conference, Brian Cashman admitted that he had talked to Pavano's agent and had discussed the possibility of Pavano coming back to New York. Tyler and I both covered those four years where Carl Pavano didn't pitch for the Yankees. He was just a guy who couldn't get on the mound. So I was surprised that Cashman admitted that and, frankly, surprised that the Yankees even thought about pursuing that. Yeah, you know, Tyler, he was tied to a few other teams out there in free agency, right. but it just seemed like he was tethered to the Twins in a way. Right, and you look at the, you look at what happened with him the last couple of years. He's gotten a pitch in the playoffs both times, certainly knocked out by the Yankees, but still exciting seasons, something on the line. The other teams that were kind of pursuing him a little bit, Pittsburgh and Washington, you know, they don't really offer that opportunity. And it shows to me a lot of growth in Pavano in that, sure, you know, $16.5 million, it's a nice deal. Maybe he could have gotten more somewhere else, but he understands now that it's, it's very important where he pitches um, after the disastrous four years in New York. All right, now other news of the week, and Gil Mesh was going into his final season with the Kansas City Royals. Everybody knows about that five-year, $55 million deal that he signed, but instead he simply walks away. And Tyler, I know you talked to some Royals officials, I think it was a, a few months back, right? And yeah. they, are they surprised by this, do you think? They were shocked, yeah, they really were. You know, And without even any kind of settlement to walk away. I mean, yeah, they were prepared to have Gil Mesh come in and, and be a setup reliever. Um, they knew he wouldn't be able to start again, and they told him, you know, you can have surgery or whatever, and he opted to, to be a reliever, but in his heart, he was a starter, and he just was not comfortable taking the $12 million. It's really amazing, because that money's his. He earned that mm -hmm. um, based on the salary, the contract that he got for the work he did in Seattle, and um, you just don't see it very often. I remember Mark McGuire about 10 years ago left $15 million on the table um, to, uh, to walk away from St. Louis when he was hurt, but you really, really don't see this sort of thing. It, uh, it says a lot about the, uh, the character of Gilmesh. No, oh, absolutely. Now, we also have talked on this program about Milwaukee beefing up its pitching. They, well, they don't add to their hitting. I guess they just re-fortify themselves because Prince Fielder avoids arbitration, gets his one-year deal, $15.5 million, and this is going to be his walk year, basically, right, Jack? Right. The Brewers fans better enjoy seeing this guy hit because he won't be back there. He's a Scott Boris client, and you could even see as Doug Melvin of the Brewers was talking about it, they understand that this will be his last season. He will walk to free agency after this, and he'll be looking to put up big numbers because he's going to be looking for a big contract. Scott Boris already floated the idea that he should get the kind of deal that Teixeira has with the Yankees, eight years, $180 million. Where's that money coming from? Because the Yankees don't have it. They don't need a first baseman, nor do the Red Sox, and everybody loves to play the Yankees and Red Sox off against everybody else. But you know what? We always say that about Scott Boris' clients, and he <laughs> seems to find a landing spot for his players. If I had to guess right now, I know Kendry Morales is with the Angels, but I would throw out a team like the Angels. How about the Mets? Maybe are the Mets ready to spend a lot of money and go after a guy like Fielder? So if he puts up the numbers, he'll get the money. All right, let's talk about another guy who can still hit. I think he surprised some people last year with the Rangers. Vladimir Guerrero, great question from Dan in Montclair, New Jersey. He said, how is the guy who hit 300, 29 homers, and drove in 115 still on the market? Aren't teams like the Angels, who've done nothing this offseason, and the Rays in the market for a good DH like Vladimir Guerrero? Tyler? Yeah, I think they are, and I think eventually um, you know, he'll sign somewhere. But I, I, I have to believe that Vladimir's uh, status in the market really changed during the World Series. I mean, you, you saw how he just could not be put in the outfield again. Um, and when Vladimir, and he didn't hit, and when Vladimir Guerrero looks bad, he looks real bad mm -hmm. because he's such a free swinger and because he's older now and he kind of walks around with a little bit of a limp. Um, he's one of those players, when he looks great, you really want him, and when he looks bad, you want no part of him. And people's last memory is of a pretty bad World Series that he had. <clears throat> he can still hit, everybody knows that, and he'll sign somewhere. Um, but I don't think he went into this offseason hoping to be another value buy again like he was last year for Texas, and that looks like this was going to have to happen. We also saw Manny Ramirez on that graphic, some injury problems last year with the Dodgers and the White Sox. What do you think happens to him? Right, he's in a similar position where, you know, if you're Manny, you're saying, I deserve this kind of money, but Manny is a guy who he has slipped, and I don't think teams are going to invest a lot of money in a guy who really, like Vlad, is strictly a DH. Now, there are reports that he's been working out and trying to prove that he can play the outfield. I don't trust Manny Ramirez in the outfield. I think he's an American League player. He's been tied a little bit to the Toronto Blue Jays, and maybe they take a run at him. But I'm with Tyler. I think that both of these guys 
are going to sign close to spring training. We're already close to spring training, and it's not going to be for a lot of money. You set me up perfectly because we're on the verge of the 2011 season. Let me get to a question kind of about some dark horses out there, certainly in the American League. Jonathan from Midtown Manhattan. Who are the legitimate contenders for playoff spots in the AL as of right now? Do teams like the A's, Blue Jays, Rays, White Sox, and Tigers have a shot? I certainly think the Tigers have improved themselves. Toronto, we know the pitching's good. Tyler, of those teams there, who stands out to you? To me, I really like the Oakland A's. Um, because I think you can look at the Oakland A's and say they've got a lot of good young pitching. And in fact, they've got so much young pitching that they traded Vin Mazzaro to uh, Kansas City to get a real good offensive player, David DeJesus. You see there the, the bullpen arms they added to a bullpen that was already pretty deep uh, with Andrew Bailey and Craig Breslow and Brad Ziegler, some of those guys. Um, they can't seem to get a lot of hitters who, to want to play there. Adrian Beltre wouldn't take their money. They got a Ducky Matsui. We're very familiar with him. We know he, he can hit. Got Josh Willingham and, of course, DeJesus. They're going to be better offensively, and they're going to be really good pitching.